Hello and welcome to episode two of the Late Challenge podcast with him, Gareth Roberts, and me, Paul Cope. Episode two, and look, the first thing to say is thank you. We are overwhelmed and made up with the response to the first show. We, we were laughing afterwards, weren't we? The, as we left, we sort of went to each other. What, what, did you, what did you think? What did you think? And we both had the same attitude, which was, it was all right. Like we were a bit nervous, need to get into our stride. We haven't, we have, I realised we haven't actually done a podcast together for a long time, oh, have yeah. we? Probably a year. Um, so the response has been overwhelmingly positive. 99% positive. We're 29 in the podcast charts for sport. Robbo found this morning, which is just one behind Gary Neville, which is mental. He's also a big fan of the show, I've heard. Yeah, I believe so. So, yeah. do you know, what we want is, if you like this, if you if you like what we're doing, keep following us, keep supporting us, keep the comments coming, like, subscribe, share. If you're listening on our podcast, go and do a podcast review. You know how this game works, the algorithms, all of that stuff help us get this to number one. We, we, this is a rocket ship, basically, to borrow a Brendan Rogers analogy. We're, we're building a rocket ship and we're flying it at the same time. And basically, you're the passengers and you're the fuel. And we want you on board with it. We want to be interactive. We're going to be mentioning a few things today that people have been saying. Um, and as we're coming in, Robbo basically said, there's some bonuses available. If you, if you, if you like and follow, um, Robbo will come around and give you a little back massage. That's, that's all right, isn't it? Or, yeah, or you can have you can have a pint with me in a Kirkdale pub of your choice. Um, it's up to you. And what about <laughs> the other one? Like basically, if you do all of them, I said Rob will come and give you the balls a little tickle. But just a, just a, not not sexual though. We said didn't we? This isn't. It's just a little, just a little I mean, tickle. I think, I think we might be venturing into Cope's fantasies here, <laughs> but <laughs> but you know it, it, he's right. You know, get us in all the places that you'd expect to get us. So we are on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. TikTok, um, TikTok's been surprisingly uh, useful for us, hasn't it? TikTok's in, in, been in a bit mental, one. hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, we've had, like we put a little clip up. We put a couple of little clips up. The Jacobs team has done here, and one of them's flown on TikTok. Basically, there's like ninety thousand views at the at the time we're recording this, and obviously that comes with we've had ninety nine point nine percent positive. But it wouldn't be the internet, would it, if we didn't have no. a bit of backlash and. Uh, it looks like, you know, we did a crisp challenge last week. One of the challenges we didn't talk about was who will cause the most shit challenge. And I can't believe I won week Shoot. one by a yeah. landslide. So, do you know, I've I've caused caused offence by using the word woke. I've caused offence. My favourite one, which is, I think is peak internet, is I've caused offence by talking about cause and offence. Yeah. Which is a which is a good one, isn't it? My, my favourite one, though, oh, you caused offence with your clock. Yeah, which, some people don't like the clock. Um, one person said it looks like we're recording from a crematorium. Uh, so thanks for that. Yeah, that um, you know, Jacob has put hard work into the set and you've mortally offended him there. Yeah, he's uh, so, crying so, earlier. So, so well done. Yeah, but nice. as you say, it is the internet, isn't it? It's just sort of like, this is what happens on the internet. There, there is always someone who'll throw a bit of shade in and a bit of snide in and, and, and people find things to do that about. Well, and this is the, like, my, my favourite one was... Uh, Someone called me a pound shop J Comfries yeah. and, t- <laughs> and, and, t- and, and a total bullshitter. And like these comments were just from my family. So I've said to them, you know, just calm down. It was only the first show. <laughs> um, and But look as well, me, th- this is called the late challenge. This is about getting stuck in and me and Robbo are not averse to getting stuck into some meaty topics. So the idea is we're going to keep this show light as much as we can and we'll get stuck into some stuff. But you saw last week, it flies by, the time flies if you want us to get stuck into more stuff, we will happily hit some like hard topics in more shows, but we need you to tell us that. Like if you want us to do more, tell us, email us, send us comments, share everything online, come to us on social media, tell us what you want and we'll do whatever the people want, won't we? Yeah, absolutely. Like, I mean, you know, it's a, like we said last week, it's a new format. Uh, we're sort of set, we are making it up as we go along to a certain extent. Um, it's been good to get the feedback. Lots of it was constructive. And like, if you want more of certain things, yeah, we're not averse to doing it. The whole thing, it, really, we're just see, we're testing the water. We're seeing where it goes. You know, if you want us to do more stuff, tell us. If there's something in spe- specific you want us to talk about, tell us. You know, j- just tell it. You tell us your plans for the podcast, and we'll see if they align with ours. Basically, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, which should we get? Should we get stuck into get the, stuck to the in. first section? So yeah. we're, we're sticking with the alarm clock because we 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 like it so. There's our keep keep us on our toes. So we're gonna we're gonna start this this week with with a bit of a catch one last week and the crunching challenge all together. Um, I wanted to start off with with an update because your your Python thing got a bit of 
traction, didn't it? A few it people did. got on board. Yeah, pe- lots of comments about it, lots of questions about it, which you understand. So I, I found out uh, the things that you wanted to know. Um, so, you know, the 34.5 seconds that Barry Rigby uh, et his pie in, uh, that's not actually a world record. The world record is 23.53 oh. seconds. So what did he have then? So he just he just won the pie in challenge for this year. Ah, okay. Um, it's the second time he's won the crown. Um, so the world record holders, are they still alive? Are they knocking around somewhere? I saying think he's still kicking about, shit. still going. Uh, yeah, he'll be there going, just, you know, couldn't make it down to Wigan that week. That shit, that body. <laughs> uh, people asked about the heat of it in the comments as well. Uh, according to the event organiser, he just says it. they can't be not too hot and not too cold, he's just said. Um, simple rules from the uh, pie master Tony Callahan there. Uh, in terms of all the rules, it, it says you have to eat a full meat and potato pie and you have to show an empty mouth, um, which, you know, Barry's video of him doing it is available online and you can see him. He shows his mouth to, to uh, Tony and that's him. He's won. Size, we were talking about the size yeah, last week, where we was Because we were saying, you know, the beautiful pies from home baked a big fellas, aren't they? And, you know, you wonder whether Barry was, was eating something along those um, lines. Well, apparently it has to be a diameter of 12 centimetres, a depth of 3.5, and this is the best bit, and a pie wall angle from base to top of between zero and 15 <laughs> degrees. A pie wall angle. Now that, like I was thinking about, oh, I'm just gonna have a go on here one week, I think. And, and we want you to have a go and, you know, send us your videos of doing it if you get a good time or whatever. But how's everyone measuring this pie? Like compass and fucking protractors are we, out. Are we getting this protractors out? I always go on about you know, the stuff you learned in school, especially like in maths. Need. That you never need. Yeah. It. And this, is this what it's gonna come in handy for? Are we all gonna go, Get our kids protract. So you're learning thing, pie in school. You have, a bit, you haven't got a protractor, have you? You'll have to get the kids. Cara, yeah, Cara has, because he's actually doing all this stuff at the moment. Oh, yeah, he, well, he was going on about pie the other week, as in, you know, the, the mathematical one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the one you eat uh, when you're going up against Barry. So, yeah, um, if That's anyone not wants that big to then, is it? Got, no, it's 12, not that big. 12 centimetres. Well, I read up on it as well. And what seems to be the, like, so there's an, a fella that's, being faster and beating Barry before he didn't turn up for this contest but there's one where he did, he had turned up but he'd lost and it, apparently sometimes what can happen when you're attempting to do it fast is you just you just hit a bit of a wall with your swallowing it, like it's a thing you know you can like and, and so like even the best pie eaters will sometimes have this swallow problem and that allowed Barry to nip in one year and win the title apparently oh, nice. but this other fella Martin I think his name is he didn't turn up this year for whatever reason and so Barry's nipped in and won. Um, so yeah, I mean, as I say, if anyone wants to have a go and wants to, uh, you know, send us your uh, your pies and exploits, we might use it on the show. Maybe. Yeah, hundred percent. This and look, any any other records you come across that you think you'd like to have a go at, or you'd like us to have well, a go I'm at. I'm determined that we break one. I was saying this to you, wasn't I? So like, I'm I'm, I'm into it now. I think there's there must be records out there that we can break. Yeah, while we're you're, doing this podcast. You're determined to get me to eat something on well, the yeah. show, aren't and you? I and I found one. I, well, I, he didn't want to do bananas because he said he doesn't, doesn't like them because I think it was eight bananas in a minute or something is the rec- world record for that. But I found one that I reckon you can do that one. Uh, remember I said about the peas? <laughs> the pea one. Eating peas with a, with a, um, a toothpick. Look, I, I, it, it was 49 in a minute and I thought that's... You're, you are doing that. that thing on all these records though where you're like, that's easy that. Yeah. <laughs> It's not. Well, what's the rule? You can only pick up one pea with the toothpick, or well, can you put you your can. toothpick to like think about, about six? It. It's about the technique, isn't it? You can think about even when you're trying to yeah. pick peas up with a fork. I know. I love the way you always show me how to do it. I'm like, I know how you do <laughs> well, it. That's what I, I mean. Pick. But it's it's obviously harder than it nah. sounds, isn't it? But well, there we, there we go. I I I want devil devil want I'm not into doing peas, it. so you can not, do the peas. I'll I, do the look, pie. I will not be eating anything in record time on this show. I've got I've got like a serious job to do, and people will be like. You, you, do you, want, you, you can come to help me change my life. Who are you? I'm like the fellow who ate a load of peas yeah, on the internet. Yeah, the world record holder for eating fucking you, peas with the what toothpick. You, what have your qualifications for this? Fucking <laughs> Guinness Book of Records, lad. Imagine that on your CV. Be boss, that. Imagine The fellow that. who eats the pies is going to box I your say, life. Do you know what? Say that. <laughs> I see that, but we were at the family family meal last night, and we were sitting there for the last ten minutes. We we're doing all weird things. With, Joe, and you're like, "Can you do this with your?" Joe, oh Joe, yeah, like, not, yeah. Can you? Can you do the spark thing? We, yeah, we that, figured yeah. out last week. I was just sitting there, and I can I can bend my little fingers. Right, this is no good for the podcast. But if you're on YouTube, I can bend my little fingers over without bending the other fingers. And my girlfriend just went to me. 
what are you, how are you doing that? You're an alien. And I was like, what do you mean? Everyone can do that. And it turns out they, they can't. can't. No. So Joe, it was proper. It was a proper royal family moment. We were just sitting there in this pub after a meal, all going, can you do this? Can, can you wiggle your ears? Can you wiggle your ears? I can't. I can't. My brother can. It's about the unusual thing he can do. The <laughs> um, Does he put that on his CV? <laughs> Fuck no, it's everything else is on his CV, so it probably is on there. Yeah, I love that. Um, right. So, yeah. Get, send us in stuff, yeah. Send us in. We want, send us in videos of you doing stuff. We want you to break records. Let's, I'd love it if we can make this show. Like, imagine if we get to the point where we've broken the most records. That'd be a good record to have, wouldn't it? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, any shit like that, let us know. The other thing I wanted to mention, which we didn't mention last week, and I thought was going to get a lot more mentions, but it did. I did have a look through. Have you seen more than I've found? Your jumper that you had on last week. Mm. Did you think it was going to get more mentions? I thought it'd get a shout. Yeah, I bought it, especially for the first show, and I was a bit mortified, really. I got, I got the, the, there's the nice one that you've mentioned on the agenda where someone said, like, you know, I, I, and someone, someone DM'd me actually and said, you know, where did you get it from and all that kind of oh, stuff. Did they? So, so just to give a shout, someone did delay mention- teen on, was that on YouTube? Can't tell you how much I appreciate yeah. that jumper, Robbo. The absolute best footy show ever made that. Yeah, it was referencing Football Italia for those that um, didn't see it. Obviously, those that listened wouldn't have seen a jumper. Of course, um, yeah. But some lad did come on. I remember him from Anfield Up Days. He's a bit of a... Uh, I think he likes to have a little bit of a, a dig in one way or another. I mean, he said the show was good in a, in a roundabout way. But then he said that he, he, he felt that it was... Golazzo was, was spelt wrong. Spelt like, wrong, yeah. Should have been with a Z. And what I was you, like, what were you I've, thinking of that? Well, I've looked it up and and it seems to be like it, it spelt both ways. Like there was a bar in Leeds called Go Lazio, the way it was spelled. What did you have? Jumper. Two C's? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, your jumper, for, pe- for people who don't remember it, go back and have a look. And it, this, is we'll, this is where we'll boost views on all videos. Like go it. back and have a look at something we put on. Um, there was four words, wasn't there? But I, I didn't, it was, the, it was the thing the fella shouted at the start yeah, of the yeah, show, yeah. wasn't it's it? Lyrics, but yeah. I wouldn't have... I wouldn't have got it until the last word. Yeah. Because I don't know the others. I don't know them now, now that I haven't got the jumper on. It's a boss jumper um, though, isn't it? Cheers, mate. Yeah. And um, then You've missed my fact out, by the way, you know. Oh, shit, yeah. Um, come, sorry, go on, we'll put it in here. You so said you are going to do a fact of the week. A fact of the week. Yeah. And do you know what? I even put that in bold on my agenda, uh-huh. so I wouldn't forget. Well, um, my fact of the week this week about Liverpool is that once upon a time, there was a scouse pound. A scouse I'm pound? I'm fucking bang into this, you know. Like money? So, yeah. So, so like, imagine, imagine we had our own currency now, and we could just like. So years ago, right? I like for, for about ten years, I worked in Manchester, various different jobs. Worked for the Daily Sport for years, but I also did some stuff at the uni, like just you know, publications, editor type work. Um, and I always remember like Tony Barrett of now Liverpool FC fame ran me up one day and we were just having an atter and he was like, where are you there? And I was like, I'm in work. And he's like, where, where are you working now? And I said, I'm working at the university in Manchester doing some stuff for them. And he went, I hope you're not fucking spending the Scouse pound in Manchester. <laughs> 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 which, I abso- <laughs> which I absolutely so, loved. I mean, but, that, that brings all kinds of like I know. But now there was a head. Scouse pound though, there literally was. So Liverpool was the first and the only city in England ever allowed to issue its own money. It was allowed to, we didn't just do it. And it did so from 1793 until 1796. So basically there was a shortage of money. And like Liverpool went, hang on, you're like, we're a dock here. And like, you know, you're fucking up our business here by not giving us money. So any chance we can just make our own? And, and the government went, yeah, go ahead. But in fairness, there are still fellas in Liverpool who make their own, aren't there? Well, yeah. <laughs> just... <laughs> 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 They just haven't got the approval of the, of the government this time. No, they definitely not got the approval of the government, and I don't think it's got anything to do with the French Revolution, that either. <laughs> do you know what? I, I, I wanted to call your fact of the week boring as well. I was like, oh, it is old. But, but that's actually a boss so, well, little I, fact, that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, thank you. You've, you've surpassed yourself there. <laughs> so I, I think we should bring that back. I used to joke, I lived, I lived down in, and worked in London when I was in my early 20s, and I used to love doing the whole, like, I had a boss who was from the East End who, who was dead sound, and I used to say to him about Joe. Liverpool, like Liverpool's its own separate estate and all that. And he used to go, to, I used to say to him, we should build a war around it, make it like Monaco. And he used to go to me, you should, yeah. But he was coming at it from the other end, you know I mean? Yeah. He was what? like, we want you to have a war yeah. around it, fuck, fuck off. off. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I can't, can't even know where I was going with that. Though. Yeah, the money, like, that it would make sense that we've got money 
for all separate statements. So maybe we should bring that back. I know. How can we go about doing that? I don't know. Petition the government. F- imagine like a fiver with like the Scouse Republic on it. <laughs> yeah. And like, you know, instead who, of, instead who of like, we have on the notes? And I was just thinking that instead of like, you know, Charlie without his crown, um, you could have, uh, I don't know, we, we just just like boss Scouse people. Like, I don't know. Imagine, on there you know what, imagine the shit it would cause. It causes enough shit that people paint pictures of Liverpool footballers on the end of houses, doesn't it? I know. Imagine if, imagine well, if there was like, imagine the battle, there was a Liverpool manager purple, on like a, on a tenner, but then who gets the five and who gets yeah. the 20? So it'd, ha- it'd have to be like Scousers that are universally liked by both sides of the Fucking city. Hell. Is there any okay, such thing as someone who's uni- universally liked now? So we, Jacob's found uh, a, a black one. So uh, as, <laughs> as you said, people are um, people still Filming making them um, scouse pans, but I don't think you can actually spend them. It's fair to say. Um, someone launched an app as well at, at some point in 2017, but I didn't read up on that because I thought I'll just take you with the facts. That's you know boss, I mean? that mate. I'm loving it. And I, I've just checked how much time we've got. We haven't got much as, as always. So the one thing I wanted to mention here. Uh, just quickly, someone, someone up my shit in on the same toilet as Jimmy Corkle's story. Quality. By uh, Ollie five times said, he loved the show. Thanks, mate. And he said, by the way, I can one up on you. I shat in Keanu Reeves's bog. That's a good one, isn't it? Yeah, celebrity the bogs that you've, yeah. that you've killed one off in. Never um, expected that to be a topic of conversation no. when we started, did so we? So we've got, got, we got you shitting in Jimmy Corkle's bog. We've got Ollie shitting in Keanu Reeves's bog. If, if anyone else has done any celebrity bog shitting, yeah, let uh, us know. Get, get let us know. Yeah. We, we've got a live of. audience. Carl's lo- in, in the background. He's come all the way over from Ireland to watch the recording. Yeah, this is the, the first live show. He, he's actually it? brought as well, uh, just quickly, he's brought... I'm gonna put this. I'm gonna put this on Twitter to end this debate once and for all. So he's brought Barry's tea because uh, I was running short. So thanks for that, Carl. But he's also brought uh, Lions tea, and this is a big thing in Ireland about you know which one's the best, basically. Um, so so that's a Cork one, Barry's, and then Lions is like your you Dublin lads all drink that, don't they? So it's like a huge oh, it's source territorial. of beef. Is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And well, so we were every- saying just before the show, when we th- we we didn't realise till we went on a tour of Ireland that they fucking hate each oh, other. Oh yeah, they? yeah. They're all like you know them Cork pricks, and then you go down to Cork, and they're like them fucking Dublin yeah. bellends, and then they're like oh them bellends in the north, and you're like yeah. bloody hell. Lads. This myth about like the, the like the international myth that all Irish people love each other and they're all this big one big happy family. It's not true. They fucking hate each other. This is worse than like you know when when I get like people kicking off on me for. I'm not a proper scouser because I'm from Aiton and all this yeah. kind of stuff. And it's like, okay, now nah, lads, come on. So Stephen Gerrard, not a proper scouser know, then. Peter Reid. We're, we're going to talk about that in more depth yeah, at some we'll point, aren't we? Day, yeah. um, and look, we haven't got much time for this now, but the, the results of last week's crisp vote, this is the, we're squeezing in the crunching challenge into the end of the crunching challenge, two minutes left. You, you were, I'm, I'm, I'm we fuming. haven't talked about it, but I'm guessing no. you're fuming, aren't you? Fucking you went with your big hitters. Finger licking knickknack nonsense. <laughs> I voted yours the winner. Finger licking you knickknack know, like nonsense. I was thinking, about. people, we should get, we should start merchandise. I've got one for the end of the show. That should be our first t shirt. Finger, Finger licking knickknack nonsense. nonsense. You know, he was there on, on <laughs> this podcast last week saying, I sit there licking my fingers on public transport. And I thought, well, I thought, well, he's fucked that. No one's voting for that. That's just fucking, fucking weird. It. And then he's won ribbon saucy knickknacks, 52.1% of the vote. Yeah. Beef Space Raid is 47.9. Yeah. And I actually had someone message me about the show and he said, oh yeah, um, you know, I love the Chris section. And I said, yeah, I can't believe Copy's won the vote though. And he said, oh, I thought he made a really strong argument. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. It was nonce as fuck. <laughs> it was, it was are, are nonce we doing this, as fuck. Are we doing this week's Chris? Yeah, we'll have to quickly. Yeah, yeah. come on. Go on. We both so we're on. not going to go long on this, are no. we? So, um, we don't, I, even, I, we I don't just, look what we've got, do we, before? I just want to win the vote this week and I'm going to prove myself to be an absolute hypocrite. I've gone pickled on your monster ah, much. I was thinking this. <laughs> I think you made a schoolboy error going for the beef and not for the pickled onion. A few people went for that. Someone said they wanted to wear the crunch. Yeah. Because that's what there we know, though. Um, and I've gone for. Oh, I'm going to go there. Can go for one Yeah, I've gone. For, I've gone for a strong classic. I've gone for quavers, um, because I fucking love them. I like I, I'm, I'm sticking for now with the uh, the whole. And I think you're doing the same thing. The corn. Oh yeah, starch we, we got, thing, we, got com- I mean? we got complaints about that. Oh, did we? Yeah, yeah. Why? Like their corn snacks. Oh, they're not real they're crisps. Not real yeah, crisps. fucking hell. It's like, oh, come on. You okay. know what we mean. I, I, that, I mean, proves my point from the start of last week, didn't we? Which, by the way, we're not complete pricks. I wasn't saying we're going to intentionally try and offend people. I'm just saying people naturally get offended, which proved me point to all of you out there getting offended by... I'm offended that I didn't crisps. win last week's vote. So when we put this one to the vote, 
And you just vote for fucking Monster Munch Pickled Onion. Yeah, Absolutely don't. classic. I mean, I would like to go 2 0 up, to be honest. I was going to say to you before last week's vote, let's avoid any of this Brexit nonsense by, like, to get a clear win, you need 60%. Do you know what I mean? Because it was 50 50 at one point, wasn't it? For ages. But then uh, I thought to myself, seeing as I've won, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, 50, Col- 52 is a clear Col- win. Cope's 1 0 up. Um, I need to equalise one plus pickled onion. Monster Munch are absolute classic, surely better than Quavers. Quavers are like if you're on a diet or something, aren't they? I think. Whereas- Quavers are fucking boss, though. I didn't realise this until a few years ago. Again, another good hangover one. Uh, the boss on the bu- boss on butties, and I never thought they yeah, would be because they, they squash dead well. So you can put loads on and have loads of butter and they're, they're amazing on a crisp butter. you can get aggressive putting pickled onion monster munch on a butter because you've got to crunch them down and like punch your butter. I'm going to help you with your arguments. I like that. I mean, that would suit you, wouldn't it? A crisp you can get aggressive with. But, but <laughs> you can butty. punch your butter. <laughs> We've got two t-shirts already. You can punch your butter with the late challenge. Jim, so, punch so and I love so, <laughs> so, Brilliant. <laughs> Classic. So what I love about Monster Munch is you can you can eat I, I'm a proper nibbler when it comes to like eating food. Like I'll I'll strip did say this last week. I can I'll like strip the chocolate off oh, the outside did, yeah, Kit Kat yeah, yeah. Monster Munch, you can eat them one finger at a time. So you can take them take your time. Well, you got a comment on your uh, crisp eating technique as well, didn't you? Yeah, what did you call me a lizard? Lizards crisp, like a lizard. <laughs> Eats crisps like a lizard. I mean, that's... how many lizards have you seen eating crisps? I mean, it's going on me. It's going on me CV as well. Do you know what I mean? Next time I go for a job, it'll be hilarious, won't it? Um, um, I just wanted to quickly mention as well, um, just like a little any other business was there. Uh, we mentioned last week about uh, the price of ale on the show. Oh yeah, and the fact that you know seven pound pint was in the post and all that. So I went for a pint on Smith Down Road at the weekend. Quality like, and uh, you know, what, did a little pub crawl along there. Uh, one of the gaffs I went in though, six pound thirty for a pint. And what on pint? Smith Man Road? What pint? It was just some kind of IPA. It was all right, like. Yeah. But I was not expecting nineteen pound. Yeah, for, whatever, I mean, for people for, for three pints. For, you know what I mean? Yeah, for international listeners, Smith Down Road, like outside the city centre. Used to, I mean, student gaffs, wasn't mm. it back in the day? That was, I don't know. I'm guessing it still is. Where I used to go and drink when I was a student and. For it to be six pound thirty down down there is mental, yeah. isn't it? Eighteen pound ninety. Sorry, I can't do maths. I was just on the. Have well, you just corrected your own, your own maths yeah. before someone kicks off? Before someone kicks, before someone's offended. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and also, we did get a tweet about it as well because I tweeted about it to say, you know, this is literally unfolding in front of my eyes. What we talked about last week. Steve Mason replied, said, "Yep, yeah, I've paid fourteen pound forty for two pints in town." I did ask him where, but he didn't come back. But. That's fucking it's mad, crazy, isn't, it? isn't it? Like people are just gonna, like I said last week, people are just gonna jib it. Like you know, there's profit margin, and then there's profiteering, isn't there? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and, I mean, this is again another one for a longer show, isn't it? Yeah. We're already breaking our own time limits, but the, the, the does come time. It's it's like the oil thing you said last week about Joe when they announced sellers ta- like profits and they're like yeah, and the the instant reaction you said it was like tax them, and I'm like no, just don't let them make that much profit in no, the first yeah. place. It's crazy, like. People can't afford to eat their, heat their houses. People can't afford to have a pint. And, pe- and this is the thing, like... Doctor's surgeries I'm, can't afford to heat the doctor's surgery. Yeah, is one exactly. Of this week. Which is nuts. Yeah. And so there is, we don't know, do we? Like, may, maybe just the cost of producing ale has gone up so much. Because, and look, this all ties in, doesn't it? Because lots of the reasons pints are going up in prices is the pubs are saying, we can't put the heat on. Yeah. So, and that goes back to Shell making all the money. So Shell should be subsidising beer drinking, as far as I'm concerned. Um, should we start the second one? Because otherwise yeah. we're... Uh, here we go. Robbo made a good point last week, actually, for for those of you who get frustrated with us moving on from things. We are literally on the clock here, aren't we? Like, yeah. we're in a podcast studio, which we're paying for, and uh, we literally only have an hour-ish to sort this all out. So, the football challenge we're going to do is the second bit. Um, I made a comment last week, which we clipped, as I mentioned, and it uh, went a bit mental on TikTok, and we've had all kinds of people coming back to us. I love... I do, Something I do actually love is... Now that we're on the receiving end of something I've watched other people in the in the public eye have for years, is that you know a, a one minute clip goes mental and everyone thinks that's just the entirety of what that person thinks about something and judges them accordingly, which is funny. You were getting stuck into a few people on TikTok, weren't you? And one of the the first the first comment that came through on YouTube actually before it all kicked off on TikTok was 
By the way, I'm just wondering. I'm, I'm like, oh shit! I've left me notifications on WhatsApp, and it's just made a noise on the show. It's fucking Jacob sending messages. Is it? <laughs> while we while we're trying to do a professional podcast, we're trying to we're like ultimate professionals, and you're interrupting it, sending them. To be fair, he's, to be fair, he's saying um, he's saying Shut we've up. got to laugh one. So you know, maybe we don't need to rush quite as much as we think because it's only twelve forty-seven at the time of recording. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? But go. it was but it was also Jacob who told us to keep it under an hour, wasn't it? And I can't Fuck win with the fucker, can you? We're on half an hour though, and you're like, oh, we need to get through this. <laughs> we've got loads to get through, have you seen? Like, I mean, the, sh- the shit we've got to get through today, Jacob, the amount of nonsense we've got to get through. <laughs> um, so anyway, I, I love it whenever you get a message from like someone someone called Jono. And I mean, we've got two mates called Jono, and I thought it's probably one of them bastards, isn't it? He said, uh, Paul sounds like those fair weather fans now. So we would only go to watch Liverpool if he's guaranteed they'll be good. That's not even a real fan. Jono, you, you misinterpreted what I said, mate. Even if you guarantee Liverpool will be good, I won't go. <laughs> like, and that's how far I've gone now. You could tell me Liverpool are going to win 5-0. I don't want to go and sit in the cold. That was the point I was making. I'm an old, like I'm getting on now. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to have and watch. also, I fucking do go. By yeah, the way, I love, that's do you know what I mean? And it was like, show yeah, was these fucking blue noses, like diving on your comment, going there, fucking typical Liverpool fans and blah, blah, blah. Fuck off, I've been going since 1990. Do you know I loved about last week? Because <laughs> Robbo's been doing like the vast majority of the social media stuff and all that. And I was laughing because I thought, every time one of us says something that no one likes, the other person's going to get shit for it as well, yeah. aren't they? Like we're the same organism, yeah. which, which I, I really love that sort of stuff. So it was funny watching you getting stuck into people on TikTok. And he's like, oh yeah, lost a few games, have you, as one I've seen this morning? Yeah. I was I was going Jordan Soonus. I went Jordan Hodgson. Yeah, yeah fucking hell, mate. How Fuck many, off. How many, Hodg- <laughs> how many Hodgson games did we sit fucking through in hell. the fucking freezing cold? <laughs> this is the point. Like, I've done my fair share of sitting in the freezing cold watching f- f- shit footy. Do you know what I mean? This isn't like a new... This is a new thing for me in, in my stage of life. Um, but I wanted to get into it a little bit, like, in, in the time we've got. Because... George Trad on, on Twitter. We know George, don't mm. we? That is that, that's, that's the George. That's yeah. George, we know, yeah. Um, Top fella. Because he, he, he sent us a message saying, Joe, given, given the current toxic discourse online, might be interesting to address the difference in fan experience between local match going fans and those from further afield, how modern football is consumed, what it means, identity, and whether we all want even even want the same thing. And I thought that's interesting to just get stuck into for a bit. Like, what is what is a fan? I've, I've often thought as a... There is a difference even in the terminology between the word fan and the word supporter. I, I, I used to write articles for the Anfield Rap and we, I'd get big on this saying like a supporter is there to support. And this is a point actually from what we're saying, I'm saying last week, just because I'm not going to the game, it doesn't mean I'm shouting abuse at the players online and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? I still support the team mm. and, and, and you know, my attitude, like even when they're shit, I'm, I'm more the other way. I'm like, I'm explaining why they are shit and that they are humans. Me and you've always yeah. been big on this. Yeah, yeah. These are human beings we're talking about and they have problems. And it's, I've been talking a lot about this recently elsewhere about the shit the footballers go through, like emotionally traumatic experiences. And a lot of people won't like that because they're like, they're just playing football and they get paid loads of money and everything. But the reality is, humans like all of the things we experience in life are traumatic at times like work experiences which is what they they are for that yeah. these these people play it. and it has an effect on what they're doing and wait, wait, what's your take on it fan versus supporter like where do you sit well i just think like some of it's you know getting more and more toxic now in in the game and you know i think the internet has brought us a lot of good things but it's also brought us a lot of shit. And I think one of the, you know, in the past, before we had the internet and, you know, I was around then, um, Blair, you could, it was easy to ignore Blitz because you weren't seeing what Blitz was saying. You you know, you had your own group, if you like, and then yeah. beyond that, you know, w- w- you weren't sort of seeing all this all the time. But it seems to me like there's, you know, you get loads of factions now and it can be quite depressing going on to, you know, social media and things like that and seeing these factions constantly clashing with each other. At the end of the day, there's, there's loads of different people who, can. Cons- I said it last week, consume football in different ways. Mm-hmm. And I think some of this sort of like, you know, one-upmanship about how, how many times you go the game or whatever... I, I find that a bit sad now, to be honest with you. I mean, you know, like you get people saying, well, I go to every home and away and all this. And it's like, well, good for you. Like, you know someone to get tickets from then, don't you? Yeah. Like I'd go to loads of aways if I had the opportunity to. But but I on my season ticket, 
I haven't got any aways on there. And so it's hard to get on the ladder. And the people who are on the ladder stay on the ladder. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like a closed shop to go to away games. Yeah. If you're if you're a Liverpool fan. Yeah, so absolutely. unless you want to pay absolutely over the odds or pay the touts or whatever. And I haven't got the I haven't got the the, the money to do that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And like and, and even us now, right now, you know, you you're saying like, you know, you're sort of you, you you've packed in Gobbin. Um, can't be our sitting outside and all that. Then I do go and I've got a season ticket and I'm at every home game and I tick all the boxes for the cups and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And we've got Carl in the studio who's come over from Ireland to go to game tonight. Do you know what I mean? Like there are all different types of fan and and is one less or more than the other or are they just actually we're all on the same side, aren't we? Well, that's what, what I, I mean? well it's something I and look you've got to remember. Me and Robbo are like from the city. We've been going the match since we were little kids. We in, historically we were those lucky people who got access mm. to tickets and we could go to the game. We'd live not far away from the stadium and stuff like that. And it wasn't until I went travelling, like I mean, a long time ago when I first went travelling. Now, but then probably about five years ago when I was I was watching Liverpool by myself in the middle of the night and getting up at all hours in the morning to watch them. And it gave me a newfound respect for people all around the world who, who yeah. follow any football team when. I, I remember coming back and saying to everyone, people who go to match here, whatever team it is, lots of them have this egoic thing of like, we're more we're more important and we're more special than other people. And loads of people I know, I'm like, if, if I suddenly said to you, well, to go with that game, instead of going on a Saturday afternoon or a Sunday afternoon or a Friday night and going with your mates, you just have to get up at five o'clock in the morning before work or four o'clock in the morning and watch it by yourself before you go and do a full day's and work. And you have to save up forever to actually get over here. If you, well, if you want to come to the game, do but these I mean? people who are just like getting up in the middle of the night just yeah. to watch the match on telly, that to me- And then you is, get fleeced by a Is way more dedication than, you know, being able to, have, having the good fortune yeah. to go to the ground and experience oh, yeah, all the great stuff. I mean, I, I, I've, I've written that and said that myself before. You know, all I all I had to do was get, you know, the 10 to Kenny and the, you know, the, the, the get the bus down Shield Road and- then I was there. And, yeah. and, you know, when I first started going, you could just turn up and go. Mm. You know what I mean? All you had to do was get there, Andy. Like, so the bigger games... I mean, there were some games where you got vouchers and stuff like that. But, you know, mo- most of the time, basically, we, we'd go down about 12, being there for, like, you know, half 12-ish, something like that, which seems ridiculously early and, and is. But it meant you were in. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And that was sort of part of the thing. And it was the stand and cop when I first went and stuff like that. And now, like, it's so hard to get to games that are inexpensive, as you mentioned last week, which seems to have annoyed people as well. It is expensive yeah. to go to football. Like, who, who thinks it's cheap? Yeah. It's not. Do you know what I mean? And so, I, I, again, like, you know, we're in a cost of living crisis. Um, you know, there are various pressures on people, more pressure on others, you know, than others, etc. You know, everyone's got individual circumstances. Mm. And all this sort of, like, rush to judgment about how much of a fan or supporter you are. I just find it a bit strange and like, you know, I, I wrote something the other week about sort of, you know, that I've even seen like sort of, you know, like some fans and I will always say some fans turning on local fans and it's like, how's that, how's this happen? Because because those fans or, or some local fans don't want certain owners mm. and, and some of those fans watching from afar aren't, don't give a fuck who the owners are as long as we can buy Bellingham or whatever, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just like, you know, so there are like these conflicting like ways of supporting the same club and team now that we're more aware of, I think, than ever before. And I think mm-hmm. that's where some of it comes from. But also I just think as well that in footy at the minute, there just seems to be like a real rise in like the toxicity of it. And that, that was why I brought the paper in. Um, because, you know, we're recording this the day after Leeds have played Man United. And here on the back of the mirror here, it says like game in the gutter, sickening. And it's talking about Leeds fans, some Leeds fans singing Munich chants and some United fans singing Galatasaray murder. You know, the lads who got murdered in Istanbul. And then we've obviously had our own versions of that as well. And, and, and you know, th- th- this is fairly unprecedented. And, you know, we're speaking before you know, Liverpool play Everton and Merseyside police have put out a tweet just before we came on air saying, um, just to be clear, any chance in relation to murderers or always the victim, a football tragedy related and totally unacceptable. Behind them are people who suffered unimaginable pain. Where possible, positive police and steward and action will be taken. Um, you know, and, and in the piece about Leeds and Man United, it's talking there about the Premier League want to take action. We're constantly talking about this now. 
and it's like, but the, but there's a crew of people among every supporter teams who are happy to go there. And I've been writing about this for years. I called it tragedy tennis years ago, where you know Liverpool fans do it, so Man United, Man United fans do it back. And it's just like, can't we all just stop singing about death and tragedies? Like mm. it's absolutely fucking grim. And and you know, like that's not to like to try to dilute it because to I, I don't I love nothing more. And like people who maybe saw me, like I've been stopped by people who, who said to me, I seen you at Man City and you just naff give that lads that lad loads because there was a lad like on the divide at Man City once who as soon as I walked in there started going on about Heisel and Hillsborough so I gave him both barrels all game picked on the wrong person and, there, and I was like you know ripping everything about him his appearance his teeth the fact that he was a man you know whatever and there's there's loads to go back there yeah you know if you want to just have beef with someone at the footy there's loads of places to go go and go and have the beef in yeah. a in a way that's the right side of the line for me. But when you're like literally like, you know, getting into people's minds about a tragedy, which, you know, affected people and, and continues to affect them. I just think, you know, surely we're all a bit better than that. Or maybe that's a bit utopia, I don't know. Yeah, well, look, this this may be one for, going back to what we said before, this this is probably one for a bigger conversation, isn't it? Yeah. Like a longer conversation and a deeper one, because there's lots to explore in it. And I th it's funny, isn't it? Because you, you can say ultimately, yes, in an ideal world, everyone is better than that. But the, for, the inside of football stadium is a bit like the real life version of being on Twitter or TikTok, isn't it? Mm. Like there's an element of anonymity. I often say like, do you know, if you freeze frame a picture of a, a, a shot of the crowd at any one point and like people, you know, when people are like, just they've lost it and they're dead, being dead aggressive yeah, for yeah. whatever reason, you could go through and like Joe points at someone and go like, see him. He's a 65 year old granddad of four kids, retired accountant. Joe, in his day to day life, he's a dead nice fella. And he's just lost it at the match because yeah, yeah, yeah. his chimps come out and he's gone into a rage and whatever. And that's the other side of like, we, these are humans. So how do we deal with that? And, and where is the line? Because it's always like, well, can we, we can sing about this, but we can't sing about yeah, this. Why yeah. not? Why is that all right to sing about, but this isn't all right to sing about? And that's where we get into the point of like, well, what type of world do we want to live in? We're going deep here, so we're, we're going to move on in a minute. But um, <laughs> then, yeah, it is it is a big topic. But the, I think you you said something before, which I think is the biggest point, which is about judging other people. Like just just accepting that other people like, consume footy in a different way to you. And and there is a line, like, you know, if people are going beyond the line, I'm not saying we should just accept that because that, that's not true at all. Um, but one of our mates made a great point, actually, didn't he? Which was, which was, remember the vast majority of football fans. And when we say the vast majority, I mean, the vast majority don't go the game. Mm. They're, they're watching it on at home on telly. Because well, it's very limited how many people can go to the match. Yeah, certainly in the, in the respect of big clubs, yeah. Um, because, you know, there's, there's only so many tickets, um, you know, and... The city we live in is absolutely rife with touts. People make people literally making a living out of selling on footy tickets is a thing, and that and that, that's another thing that never gets talked about. It's just sort of like it's that weird like underbelly of culture where people just sort of shrug it off and just go, yeah, so it just happens, doesn't it? And it's like, but it's grim as fuck. Yeah, it's like you know, like back to the fellow footy fan thing, and we're all on the same page. Why would you be all right with on the regular ripping off another footy fan? And and then why does it become justifiable? Oh, well, they're not from here, so fuck them mm. type of thing. I, I find that grim as well. I, I don't like that, but I don't, again, I, I haven't got answers for you. I'm just, I'm just a middle-aged man babbling on a podcast. Yeah, like. yeah. And look, that, we've literally done nearly the whole 15 minutes on that, which we, I didn't intend to, but shows how much there is to get into. So if you want to hear us talk about that more, let us know. Um, I, it, considering we have got time, I'm going to, I am going to go past this because I did want to talk about a couple of like funnier things in this section. You, you found a boss little article on, this is completely change attack by the way, isn't it? Cause it's Valentine's day, isn't it? As we, as we record, it's Valentine's day tomorrow. Um, the day when, as, as again, middle-aged men, the day when, uh, we show our love for the, for the romantic partners in our life by making people who create gift cards rich. Hmm. Um, Valentine's I'm Day. I'm fucking and tolerating set menus and, 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 and looking at loads of other people in a room who were fucking blatantly not very happy to be there. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you found a boss little thing that, that people can do, can't, didn't you? Didn't oh, you? Yeah. yeah. In Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough. So Middlesbrough have been advertising that you can have a, a Valentine's Day dining experience in the dressing room. Um, now, I'd, I, when I saw this, I just sort of thought, like, how does this go down? Like, you know, in terms of, like... So don't get me wrong, like, let's not broad brush. Like, obviously, you know, there will be other halves 
you know, let's just say it like that. Who were into footy and I, I'm, I might like it, but equally, I don't know. It's just a bit of a mad one to, that footy is trying to gag in on Valentine's Day. Like it, it, there's not an obvious link there for me. And like the other one I found as well was Jeff Winter, former Premier League referee. You know, he, he was lashing up um, saying, um, you know, you could get a order a personalised video from Jeff Winter. Um, he, he put for on his, Valentine's Day specifically, He though. put on his Twitter, yeah, he put, uh, are you looking for a unique way to celebrate your Valentine on the 14th? Book a personalised vi video message from me. <laughs> what the fuck? He wants a message of Jeff, Jeff Winter, Winter to prove you love your boyfriend, <laughs> girlfriend, or whatever I else you love that Twitter. Because have you seen, I, I spotted this years ago, This, this whoever started these companies where you can get celebrities to send messages. Have you ever, have you ever done it? I did one for my uncle. Like I got him one for his birthday. I got Bruce Grobble out to send my uncle oh, a boss. happy birthday message. And it was, it was that funny. Cause like it caught like there's different levels and you can see how, like how good a celebrity is by how much they cost. You know what I mean? And, um, he was like 50 quid or something. Bruce Grobble out. It was, it was a good little gig for him, Joe, for a 30 second message. But I really pissed him off because he kept saying the wrong thing. And when you're like, that's not what I told you to say, Bruce. And he was like getting my uncle's name wrong and everything. And I was like, oh, I can't say, like, I'm, I'm, being, I'm, I'm prepared to be reasonable here, Brucey, but like, yeah. you can't, like, you can't say his name wrong. I'm sending it to him for his birthday. And I, so I keep going back to the app saying like, he said the wrong thing again. And you could see, like, I wish I'd have kept the all. By the end, really pissed <laughs> yeah. off. Each, each all message, right, yeah. fucking George. All right, Alan. Like, <laughs> all right, Alan, happy birthday, <laughs> fucking hell. Yo, by, at the end, you could tell he wants to say, by the way, your nephew's a fucking bastard. <laughs> like, to, to tell him to relax. I'm paying double oh. for this. This is fucking take six. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I felt like messaging him saying, Bruce, it's not that hard. Do you know what I mean? I only gave you two lines to say, and one of them is the fella's name. Um, but yeah, it's, it's I, I do like that. I do like these things. I I did well, think me and you should have just gone to the Middlesbrough one I know. And, and and had a little just meal sat there and, and had to go. Well, well, I mean, I love taking the piss out of, and always have taken the piss out of, like marketing bump for things, because you know, like that's obviously a profession, copywriters and all that kind of stuff, and it's it, it's like professional bullshitting. Do you know what I mean? And like some of the stuff in this is just that, like it, you know, it's built. So bear in mind, it's a fucking dressing room. You know, a, a, a place where sweaty fellas take fucking football kits off. You know, walk around Bolaco. Yeah. You know, and all that kind of stuff. And it, and it, but it, so it tries to ignore that that goes on in this space where you're going to be sitting there. And it says um, there will be no smelly socks on show. The room will be pristinely presented <laughs> with, with mood lighting and music. <laughs> Um, and you get, um, so you get a, an arrival glass of fizz, bottle of beer or soft drink, three course meal created by our executive head chef, two photo opportunities, dressing room and pitch side, and uh, one fully personalized official third shirt per couple retails at £65. Um, and that's £85 per person. Fucking hell. For all that. But for it, so £85 per person, but you get a footy shirt for 65 You get a scran and a shirt, yeah. Do you reckon that's all right? Is that good value? If but you're, you're sat in a you... fucking dressing room. I, know, I mean, I I'm love overlooking you, you that know. bit, aren't I? I, <laughs> I, love the, I love the way I think it's to going really smell. well between me and you. And, uh, you know, I just thought you'd love to sit in a dressing room on the 14th of February. You're into it, love, yeah? Sound, isn't it? I mean, I'd love to hear, I would love to hear, if anyone out there is a Middlesbrough fan who has done this, Please let us know. Like, or anyone who's getting a fucking message off Jeff Winter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was, you know what? I've missed the trick there. I was going to get you one. Imagine that. Uh, All right, Rob, how happy Valentine's Day from Kobe. Well, well, you know, there's still time. There is still time. I, should, <laughs> I shouldn't have spoiled that, should I? Um, what are you doing for Valentine's Day? You had anything booked? No, I'm, I am you proper, like, Have you like had a big rant about it at home and said like, we're not doing it? No, we're not I, don't, exchanging I don't have cards. a rant. It's all bollocks. I do. I Fuck all, do, Mark. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I'm, look, I, I'm, a, I'm a sensitive, romantic man, generally speaking. And I just don't see the, like, the need to do. And I've thought this for a while now, like the whole, it's the, in the same way I don't like Joe going out on New Year's Eve. When I used to go I out all like the time, that, yeah. I was Shit. like, all the people go out on New Year's Eve, you never go out and they ruin your bar that you're in all the time. You get it's a bit like off. that on Valentine's yeah. Day. Like if you like taking your, your partner out for a meal, go out for a meal any other time. And so I, I do a lot and I do this throughout the year on these occasions. I just have a little chat and be like, what do you think about this? And, and my missus was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not bothered. Let's just do cards and do you know, you getting a uh, chiffy? Letting her have gravy. Not going that far. <laughs> <laughs> Might see how fast she can eat a pie. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the video see, for yeah, next let's week. See, let's see. Well, um, I, I'm, I'm, going on a, I'm going on a cruise. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Where are you going? I mean, that sounds dead fancy, doesn't yeah. it? But basically, it's a badge. <laughs> um, but it, 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 it's, it goes around the docks of Liverpool and, you get, a, and you get a scrap I thought, on there. I thought you meant like Joe Cruz no, around sounded, like the fjords or something. Yeah. Yeah. It sounded Doing really it, impressive. Is like, that how you sold it to you? It really like, pushed the boat out. It was like, oh, I've bought you a cruise. Yeah, you and a she's cruise. like, oh my God, what around the Mediterranean or something? You're get like, yourself no, just, a new frog. Just down the Mersey, girl. <laughs> <laughs> just just between the docks it is and then you get a scram but I just thought is it know, on like that duck one that sank no is it, it better it, one no it's, it's on like it's on a barge and like they, you know they do it up you with the tables that, and all that yeah so you have actually gone for it after yeah, all yeah. your moaning yeah yeah oh, I've gone for it yeah, but it's, it, it's, it's, um, it's our first one oh, of course um, yeah. because you know I've only been with the lovely Deborah since uh, since May so um, yeah it's our first Valentine's so is it actually on Valentine's Day you're going yeah yeah. yeah, booked it in. Yeah, because oh, nice. I was looking for something. I'm, I'm like you. Like I ate the, you know, the shite side of it and the, the set menus and all that bollocks. And so I was having a look for like something different. And then I saw that and I thought, oh, what about that? Sent it to it. What do you think about that? And she's like, oh yeah, I'd love that. That sounds great. And I was like, get in. So I got that box. Yeah. I like, I like that. I like this. I like this romantic side of Robo. Side you keep, side you keeps like hidden from the world. Softer sides finally yeah. coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Or not. Wait, do, uh, let us know how it goes next week. I will do, yeah. I love the way that's what this turn into now. <laughs> what did we do during the week, Robbo? Whoa, what happened with Robbo's badge? What with his date? Eh? It was nice. Um, so if you want us to do a full show on Robbo's dating life, you know, we could we could do that. Yeah. Might like that. Like we, Crouchy and Abby Clancy have started the show, haven't they, seen about that, yeah, relationships? Yeah. Maybe we'll compete with that. Seen, uh, the only bit I've seen it, I've seen a clip where he's basically getting the load of stick off her because she's like, you said in an interview that the Champions League was better than, uh, you know, like spending time with me or something <laughs> like that. Like, And he was getting up and he was like, I, I didn't I didn't say that. And she's yeah. like, well, did you or didn't you? And he went, well, I kind of did. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Hey, well in Crouchy. Um, we've, we just we just fucked off this clock altogether, aren't we? I, I wanted, <laughs> I don't know how I asked you. Show this, two but I just the clock's being binned. I know, uh, we'll... we'll how long have we got, Jacob? We've been going 51 minutes. If you want to keep it under an hour, but we're here to half one, so... You want to just start the next section? Yeah, carry on. You want to carry on with this one? What do you mean? I, I want to talk about Supermacano. Go Should on, Can we then. just talk about him quickly? Yeah, go on. So, so the Bayern, Bayern Munich player? Yeah, Bayern yeah, Munich. Bayern now. Munich, yeah. Um, I just saw this story during the week and I just loved it. Like, Upamecano, because he had... And I loved it. He, had, he was obviously having trouble... Like shouting to people on the pitch, which is mad, isn't it? Even when you think about that as a as a grown up. So, in fairness to him, thought I'll do something about that. So he went out and got up. He worked with an opera singer to work on his voice. And when I told you about it, you were like, "Oh yeah, yeah, That's I got like, it, I got it." Because yeah. you you were like, "It's a mad story, and it's a bit of a you know a wild one, and we can talk about it." And I haven't I haven't worked with an opera singer like, but I got I got polyps on my uh, vocal cords. Um, I'm, but basically like my voice went really gravelly and then was on the like going at times basically and so eventually I went to the doctors with it and like you know it, it, it was grim it was all like you know like camera fed up my nose and down my throat and all that kind of stuff I remember the nurse saying like if, if you lean back any further Mr Roberts you're gonna fall off the chair because it, it was just unpleasant as fuck like um, and then, you know, stick the camera down there. They have a look. There's like, there's lumps there. You're going to have to have an operation. I was like, okay. And, you know, like there was a, a bit of a waiting period where, you know, they checked out what those lumps were. Thankfully that came back all clear. But after the, after the, the operation, I wasn't allowed to speak uh, at all for, I think it was a week. Um, but, but they said when they were sort of like digging down into what, well, why are they there and why has this happened? They, their conclusion was, shouting at the match really um so it must be the same for him you know so i'm shouting at players or referees or whatever and it's done this damage and they sent me on like post op they sent me to see this specialist for a while who tried to get me to uh, project from the diaphragm yeah when you shout but that's when i told you about this you were like that'll be the same that's thing, what he's doing yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I, but so is it, but instead this... of damaging his vocal cords you, you can learn to like shout but like project from the life. Yeah, but that, see, so when you told me that, I was like, I get that, right? So I get, I get yeah, it if he went to someone. Singer, but yeah. why an opera singer? Yeah, and it know. just, and it's because, because my like 
I've got mental health problems and my brain's mad. It starts like, I could just picture him on the pitch then, Joe, from now on being like, Joe Cancelo, yeah. come back here Fuck and off. mark this fucking defense. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Fuck like, off, referee. Yeah. yeah it, 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 if that's it what mad. he's doing, I think that would be great. Do you know what I yeah, mean? If, that, if, that's, if that's the whole point of it, then... I'm all in. I might start going back to the game if centre backs are singing opera on the pitch. But I just thought to myself, like, what else could we do? Joe, you know, what mm. else is there out there that would help a footballer that seems left field? Like ice skating lessons, ballet lessons. Well, we've had mad ones, haven't we? You know, like throwing coaches, you know, now is is accepted. But when it first came on the scene, you know, like people weren't happy. Like Andy Gray wasn't happy, was he? I think uh, he kicked off about it. And then like there's all these specialists, like, you know, didn't, didn't um didn't they have like players like underwater or something and, and, and holding the breath? I don't quite know what that was for to this day, to be honest, but I remember reading it. Yeah, I remember that one. Um, that was funny. But you know it, I, that I was wonder? to teach people that you could do more than you think. That was it. But uh, you're like, well, you, you know still what? do get tired though, lads. I saw this when you when you sent it over and I was thinking about, you know, like mad things that, you know, the specialists that have been brought in and it. And obviously there's obvious ones like nutrition and stuff and all that's improved and, you know, they're not going on the aisle and running around in a bin bag the next day and all that kind of stuff like the old days. But I was thinking, I wonder if any coaches, they would never say publicly, would they? But behind the scenes, are there any coaches that are like encouraging and, and getting the players to improve their technique to dive, to win like pens and free kicks ah. and stuff like that? Because it's a thing, isn't it? You know, yeah. it's all over football. And you see, like, you know, young players mimicking the, you know, the, the Premier League players and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, well, Grealish did one yesterday, Grealish didn't he? did one, yeah. And it, Neville said that he's well, they, 100% done that on purpose. And they were 2 nil up, I think, at the time, weren't they? So, mm. like, there was a tweet, wasn't there, where someone had said, like, you know, what, like, basically, like, what a prick, like, 2 nil up against his old team. And he's still doing that, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, but I've always had, and look, this is another one, but I've always had this. I remember me, one of my aunties once, like, said, because I told her, to, do you know, like, they do that trick where the, the way dressing room's always shit compared yeah, to, yeah, and she yeah. was like, well, that's not very nice. And I was like, it's not about being nice, it's about winning a game of yeah. footy. Like, it's, this isn't like the arena in which we need to be nice to each other. And maybe that goes back to the fan thing as well, who, like, there's a lot in that. But, um, Part of me is like, but it's just the game, isn't it? It's well, just the game. You just stretch in the rules. I seen someone sh like somebody plays amateur footy. I seen them share a story on Insta um, where they were like, "Here's me diving to win the pen in the last minute," and then like he'd got up and scored it. Yeah. But he was like openly saying, "Here's me diving yeah. for the pen," and I and, I, and like that that like I was like, "That's mad, that." Yeah. What, what, you're admitting it. Yeah. Do you know well, what I mean? it's funny. I remember playing, this goes back a long time. I remember playing in like a five aside tournament once. And there were lads playing for the team who were ringers, who were who were professional footballers. But like, I was like, you are too good. How were you this good at footy when you're playing for Ted Baker or whoever it was? And you're like, oh no, we're, shall we play for Leeds, whatever. But they were, they were the dirtiest footballers I've ever played against in my life, standing on your toes, pulling you. And he was like, we're taught to do all of this stuff. Mm. He went to gain a tiny advantage over you during the game. So I was like, Sound. Pulling the ears on your legs. Yeah, yeah, all yeah. Like on corners. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know how much of the dark arts goes on like that now, obviously at the, at the top level, because everything's on camera, isn't it? And everything's like watched, scrutinized, all the rest of it. But that's why I, you know, to go back to a conversation from last week again, that's what I still love about like going to watch like non-league or whatever. There's a lot more of that goes on at that yeah, level. Yeah, no yeah, cameras, yeah. blah, blah, blah. I seen a brilliant bit of shit actually yesterday. Fucking absolutely amazing. I think it was Geisley or something like that. Um, non-league team anyway. <laughs> Basically like they got a pen and uh, the fella takes the pen, sucks it in the corner and the the, ref, the, the keeper's nowhere near it. He's, he's got nowhere near it. And one of the players on the team that scored, he just started like mimic, like diving in front of the keeper, like mimicking his shit dive and then pointing at him, buzzing off. <laughs> and I was like, that's top shit, I was really that. Like fair fucking play. That's your, that's right down your street. Yeah, I it? loved it. I, I mean, you know, it's entertaining. Isn't it? And yeah. it, you know, it's, it's probably not strictly speaking right and it's not Corinthian and all that, but it's entertaining. I love it. Right, so... I, I, my my clock control is clearly like flawed compared to yours. I need to practice this. Um, we want we, I, well, let's uh, let's start the last section, right? Which I wanted to do an internet challenge section oh, because yeah. basically, mainly because I wanted to share some 
funny videos from online that I've loved over the years, classics. And I want to encourage you to send us them in because I just think sometimes you've seen these things and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many times you're watching, they still make you laugh. And one of the things, while we dive into some serious stuff on this show, I want us to like, I want us to laugh and, and help people laugh and nice distraction from the world. So, but we also, we were going to have a chat about chat GPT, um, which we might not have time for. Do, do, do you, want to, do you want to have a little minute on that first on. And, then, and then we'll yeah. do the videos? So if, if you don't know what ChatGPT is, this is this, it's a new artificial intelligence thing, AI. And the way they describe it on their own website is, is they've trained a model called ChatGPT, which interacts in a conversational way. The dialogue format makes it possible for ja chat to answer follow-up questions, admit its mistakes, challenge incorrect premises, blah, blah, blah. It's basically this thing, which is mental, isn't it? Mm. That you you give, you type in prompts, and it's artificial intelligence. It's, it's learned from anything that's out there, and it can give you answers, and it can it can, it can just basically do anything. It's it's well better than Ask Jeeves, isn't it? It's, a bit, it's, <laughs> it's just a bit Jeeves? better than Ask Jeeves. <laughs> what I love that like, that's right at our target mark. Is it like the, do you reckon it's him behind this? He's just. <laughs> He's just been practicing it's for like, like a 30 years. of Ask yeah. Jeeves. <laughs> Imagine if you compared the two. Just to put in context for you, if you haven't had a go with this, you can have a go. Like, um, you can go online. Someone, Jackie emailed us and she was talking about this. We, Jackie, we were, we were give, wanted to give you a shout out and we'd already started thinking about this and doing the same thing because you can ask it to do all kinds of mental shit and it just does this stuff dead quick. So we asked it to write a couple of poems, didn't we? We said, we asked it to write a poem about me and a poem about Robbo. And then we asked it to leave out because it, because obviously it's gone and it's found stuff about us from like football websites and it was all predominantly footy. So then you can just say to it, we'll do that poem again, but without footy, without references to footy, blah, blah, blah. So, and do you know what? When I, I think we got my one first and I read it. Do you want, do you want to read it out? Because I feel the a bit The one weird. about you? Yeah. Uh, where is it? Yeah. Oh yeah. So this is... Um... Oh, yeah, and it came yeah. up with this in about three seconds, by the way. Yeah, yeah and it? it just does it. Like you know, I got it. To, I got it to write a, an article about um, mental health and football, and it was it was actually really good. Yeah. Like you could have posted it's it on the site and gone, it's wrote this. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's the poem. It's come up with about Kofi. Then Paul Cope with a laugh so bright, a man who brings joy with every sight. He's got a wit as sharp as a knife, and a smile that'll light up your life. From dawn to dusk he tells a tale, and with each word he'll never fail to bring a laugh and a cheer and a smile and make the world a better place all the while. Fuck me. Yeah, so <laughs> like, like, I'm going to interrupt you there, right, because it goes on and on. So I, I get this thing and obviously think, fuck it, hell, I like this chat GPT. It's, it's, it's nailed me, do you know what I mean? What a, what a lovely poem. So we asked it to do one about Robbo, and this is Robbo's. Gareth Roberts, a bard of wit and charm, a man with a voice that'll keep you... Warm. <laughs> You're like, I'm like, all right, chat. You're, you're stretching that a little bit. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. He's got a way with words, both bold and bright, and a smile that'll light up the night. And then it's next, this next bit. From morning to night, he tells a tale, and with each word, he'll never fail to bring a smile. A laugh. I'm like, hang on, lad. You yeah. just use the same fucking poem. <laughs> Yeah, I know. And you're like, there are flaws with it, it's fair to say. But, I, I asked it to write um, a song in the style of Lee Mathers from the Lars, and it was fucking shit. Was it? <laughs> it was really bad. Like, um, but some of the other stuff's impressive, isn't it? Like, you know, the, it, it's it's passing tests and stuff, isn't it? And like, Oh, it's passed pa the bar exam in yeah. America. It's passed the medical, medical exam. exam. Yeah. I mean... This is definitely one for another day because I do want to. I want to show these other videos, but so we'll I will have a we'll have a proper chat about this at some point. I I want someone to tell me why anybody thinks this is a good idea. Do you know what I mean? It's basically just going to put all humans out of work. I heard one on the radio the other day. There's a version of this now that you can put people's voices in. So That's it'll fun. say if you say like say this for me in Robbo's voice. Do a podcast in the style of Paul Cope exactly. and Gareth Roberts. <laughs> Which is that's, that's, that's was and fucked. it was boss like you couldn't tell <laughs> but then we're going to get to a point very quick where you'll be watching stuff on telly and someone will go I saw them say it You're like doesn't matter anymore mate we don't know whether that was real Mad. or not um, which is absolutely I mean it's absolutely mental but it, it did make me laugh and that that it gives me comfort because one to, to end on this on chat GPT for now I, I've got this thing Joe people always think that um artificial intelligence will be like the end of the world because they'll just take over us. But it, I think everyone has this assumption that they'll just have the best of us. Do you know what I mean? They'll just, artificial intelligence will take the best of humans 
and become better than us because of that. But I've always thought the thing of like, and this shows me like, we've asked it to do two poems and it's been a bit lazy, hasn't mm. it? Yeah. And it's copied one. Yeah. Like when we did That'll it, we asked for well. one after the other yeah. and it's just gone. Ah, fuck it. I'll just use a bit of that one and put yeah. it in. But think about it. Artificial intelligence trains off humans and humans are flawed. We're all fucked. So why won't it take all our shit stuff as well? And I've got this, I've got this idea that one day, like in 20 years time, the world will just be full of like all these fucked robots, like just sitting around the streets, alcoholics. Yeah, blathers. <laughs> yeah. On just, spice. Yeah, mo- <laughs> mo- yeah. <laughs> Mo- moaning about the price of oil yeah. and all that you know yeah, yeah. going this fucking shit this doing podcasts going yeah, they're going fucking hell it's about time we had a scouse pound isn't yeah. it <laughs> that's, that's all that's gonna happen um, so yeah I, I just fucking love the idea of that. and like look right let's get clip Jacob have you got those clips ready yeah. I just let's let's finish on these I, I love these yeah, have you this is one of my favourite the Ringo Starr one. Okay. Have you, you hadn't seen this? Have I you, haven't seen it, but I've watched it now. Like, watched I've now. seen it so now. Let's, we'll do this one and then we'll do the one, the, 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 the scout lady one and then we'll see if we've got time for the letter. This is a serious message to everybody watching my update right now. Peace and love. Peace and love. <laughs> I want to tell you, please, after... The 20th of October, do not send fan mail to any address that you have. Nothing will be signed after the 20th of October. If that has a date on the envelope, it's going to be tossed. I'm warning you with peace and love, but I have too much to do. So no more fan mail. Thank you, thank you. And no objects to be signed. Nothing. Uh, anyway, peace and love, peace and love. Uh, <laughs> It's my peace and love, peace and love. The, I love like that for a number of reasons. Like, peace and love. He, like he thinks because he's got it's like he's like the Al Scout fucking angry fella, but he's still got a bit of that. We went to India once with a bit of Buddhism, do you know what I mean? And so we want to be like peace and love. Yeah. I just love the fact that he thinks he can see, keep telling you Dingle to fuck mixed off with Dali. And then say, <laughs> yeah, and say I was thinking again, Joe for t-shirts version. Like we should just get we should just get some t-shirts and stuff with like I just want you to I, I might start doing this in arguments with people. Just go to Joe, go to someone. Just do us a favor. Just fuck off. Peace but and with love. peace and love. With peace and love. And I mean, there's so much in like I love it. I love it that like even as he goes through it, he's going like he's first throwing up fan mail and then his brain goes, People might send you some other stuff to yeah. sign. No, he goes, Yeah, not an LC either, by the way. Nothing, by the way, it'll be tough. You can send us whatever you want. Uh Carl's coming today with uh, crisps and, and tea bags. What a guy. I've had people messaging me saying they're gonna send me crisps from America and all kinds of stuff. So Peace and love. Peace yeah. and love. Send me I what mean, you want. Yeah, we are. This is a you peace know, and love podcast. Yeah, hundred um, well, percent. One thing I would say about that, like a, a slightly serious point on it, was I, I thought, have you seen the clips? All the clips of McCartney, where in interviews, basically when he was asked questions that he didn't like, he was basically doing like a V sign on his face. Oh, was he? Yeah, like so basically telling Tell the interviews to fuck, fuck off. But but he, you know, it was his own in joke. <laughs> yeah. And then like people, people have like pieced together like loads of evidence of him doing that. And it, it's just like a little insight into like even being in like one of the greatest bands ever at times wasn't great yeah. and wasn't fun. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's one of my favourite things about life. I often say this about football is like, you think it's a dream job when you grow up as a kid, but there are days when footballers get up and it's pissing down outside and it's freezing. They're like, I don't want to go outside and play 14 now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, nice point. Let's, let's do the... Um, can we do the, the Scouse one one? So for anyone who was watching that or listening to that, oh, didn't yeah. know, that was Ringo Starr from The Beatles, by the way. And this this one, this is my favourite example of like, this is like, if, if you're from Liverpool, this is like everybody's nan, isn't it? Like, this is just a well, proper, not, mine, not your, but all right. <laughs> my, my nan was like, this, like a proper old <laughs> Scouse nan with attitude. So she's, 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 she's hit a hundred and she's been read out a, a card from the Queen. Special occasion, yeah. Elizabeth. She doesn't give one shout. <laughs> 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 oh, I fucking love it. She doesn't. In case you don't, in case you don't catch that, that's her saying she doesn't give one shite. That's, yeah, it's, it's that's a madness. scouse. That's a pure scouse reaction to a, a car from the Queen, isn't it for your birthday? Well, my my nan, I just got one of these off off uh, Charlie. So she was a hundred in uh, in January, and. Um, 
she 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 was absolutely made up. She kept saying in the build up to it, like they won't know. They won't know. Someone needs to tell them. So I probably won't get one. She wanted you to send a message to the king, yeah. like saying yeah, it's just, me nan's like, birthday. Just bell Charlie and <laughs> yeah. say, Yeah, you can answer me nan's hundred there, lad, or what? Yeah. Um I mean, I don't have any beard to answer his phone with them sausage ringers. <laughs> but um yeah, they do know because uh, they know from your pension because uh, I checked oh, it out oh is that where it's from yeah, I was just yeah. how do they know yeah they know from that so um, yeah she got one and, uh, was she made up she was made up with it yeah she was absolutely delighted and like you know it's it's still there uh, pride of place in the living room like and, you know fair play to her she's, she's from a generation or a time or whatever you know or I, I don't know I don't know the reason that I've got no time whatsoever for the royals I don't give a fuck about them um, you know people can visit buildings and it doesn't need a queen in them to boost economies and things like that I, I hear that argument all the time but uh, no she was absolutely made up like so you know fair play Charlie put a smile on her face there so yeah that's I mean that's nice isn't it yeah, yeah. that's nice a nice little story um, should we save the letter for next time Oh, the letter's unbelievable. Yeah, do, do, like, do, do the letter next do time. Do it yeah. next time. We'll, we'll yeah. save, the letter might be my favourite actually. So this is like, it's like a Brookie cliffhanger, isn't it? Yeah. To tie into the first show. Yeah. We'll, we'll do the letter <laughs> next time. Um, <laughs> and look, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up there because we we are out of time. I've enjoyed that. Yeah, it's been good. Um, and you any, know, any other business? Someone said we should have any, any other business. Any other business? Um, I can't think of any. I mean, I might throw up a little poll uh, about the crisp as usual, but also I might do a tea one, so just so we can uh, once and for all solve what is the the best tea, baddies or lions, or, or cause um, or cause another war, or like cause in another the Irish, Island, you know, w- yeah, yeah com- Sit, confrontation, another split. Imagine um, that. Imagine if there was like a new border put in and some went, <laughs> why, why is that border there? Oh, fucking tea. Home like, of lions, yeah. But, uh, and, and just to reiterate what we said before as well, look, if you do like what we're doing, um, do all the stuff that you can do online. So reviewers on Apple Podcasts, put nice comments underneath the YouTube, like things, share things, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all of those things help. Um, because basically, if you like what we're doing and you want us to keep on doing what we're doing, do those things and it'll help us keep on doing it. Absolutely. And look, if you're anything like me, and I'm sure Robbo's the same, we're all the same. The number of times I'll hear people say that on a YouTube video or whatever and think, that was Bosta. And then I just can't be arsed clicking the like button. And I have, I've literally, since I've started doing this on other shows and stuff, I've started going, I'll just click the fucking like button, do you know what I mean, if I liked yeah. it. Because because it does help, like it literally, it shows, the, the whole point of it is, it shows YouTube that people like it and they show it to more people then. And it's the same on the podcast apps and same on TikTok mm. and all that. The more people do things like share and like and all that, if you don't know this already, you probably do. But it means that, because all these platforms want you to stay on the platform for longer. So if they think something's good, they'll show it to more people. So do as much of that as you possibly can. It also helps the viewer get more recommended videos that are, Oh, nice little shout out from Jacob there. Oh, no, they, yeah. Can they hear that you talk there? Yeah. Gagging in on the show. Gagging yeah. in, fucking hell. You're not, you're not getting do any cut get of do, do we get some knocked off now that you're on the show? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's it. Thank you again. Like, we're, honestly, we're, we're buzzing off the, the support. It, it's been amazing. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep doing the show once a week. If you want more, tell us. And we'll see you next week.